Christmas stories are nearly as old as the holiday itself. They've been told by some of the greatest storytellers known to mankind, and they have been presented in a countless number of unique formats. Right now, our Christmas story comes from a boy named Cole. You see, Cole is eight years old, and he's a homeschooler writing a report about what he did over Christmas vacation. And let me tell you, that report could almost write itself. You see, well, why don't I let him tell you? He's writing his report now, so let's listen in to what he has to say. This was a pretty special Christmas for me and my family because my sister Marianne and her boyfriend Joe had planned their wedding for Christmas Eve. I guess they thought it would be neat since their names happened to be Mary and Joseph, like in the Bible. Anyway, it was the day before the wedding. Joe was over at our house for supper. Then we were planning to go on to the Village Inn Hotel in town, where the wedding was supposed to be, so we could decorate. Joe, Mary Ann, Mom, Dad, and I were all sitting around the table. Then... I'll get it. Hello? Mary Ann? It's Aunt Agnes. I just got into town, and I was planning on checking in to the Village Inn Hotel. But they don't have any rooms available. Oh? Did you tell them you were there for the wedding tomorrow? Yes. The clerk said, I must be mistaken. What? He said that the hotel is hosting a large company Christmas party in its community room tomorrow. I can't believe it. I booked that venue a year ago. I knew the place had changed owners over the summer, but I didn't think it would change our wedding plans. Well, just stay there, Aunt Agnes. We'll be right on over to see what's going on. All right, dear. Goodbye. Bye, Aunt Agnes. Oh, Mom, this is just awful. What is it, Marianne? What's wrong? We need to hurry on over to the Village Inn Hotel and see if we can straighten things out. Aunt Agnes says the hotel is full and they have a Christmas party scheduled in the community room tomorrow evening. Does this mean you guys can't get married? I'm sure we'll figure something out. Joe, isn't the new owner of the hotel that fellow that used to be your neighbor? Yeah, yeah, that's Nilmont Nala Asaj. Wait. He owns a petting zoo down by the river, doesn't he? The one where our homeschool group went and I pet a llama? Yeah, he's a little different, but he's super nice. Maybe we can talk to him when we get there. Well, we better go. Aunt Agnes is waiting. So we all headed over to the Village Inn Hotel, hoping that Mr. Asaz could help sort out the misunderstanding. Poor Mary Ann looked sick. I felt sorry for her, because I knew that she had been so excited about their big Christmas Eve wedding. Stuff like that's a big deal to a girl, I guess. Hello, I am Nirmat Nala Asaj. Welcome to the Village Inn Hotel. I'm sorry, but we have no rooms available at this time. No, actually, we aren't here for a room. See, we're supposed to be getting married tomorrow evening. Oh, you're getting married? Oh, how wonderful. Congratulations. You know, my mother and father were married, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I remember so well how my father, he would speak of it, and he would say, Nilmot, marriage is what brings us together. That blessed arrangement, that dream within a dream, love, true love. Yes, but there's apparently been some kind of mix-up. The wedding was supposed to be here tomorrow evening, but the clerk said there's another event on the schedule. Oh dear, this is not good. I will check schedule in return. Please wait. I'm not sure he's going to be much help. Well, he's going to check, dear. Maybe the clerk was mistaken. What if I go call the pastor? Maybe we can just use the church if we have to. Okay, Dad. I just thought the venue here would hold more guests than our little church. I know. I'll be back. Agnes, you're more than welcome to stay with us while you're in town. We would love to have you. Yay, and Agnes, you can sleep in my room. Oh, you'll have to clean it up when we get home tonight, Cole. It's a pigsty in there. Oh, that is so kind of you, dear. You know, I was just thinking this is beginning to remind me very much of the first Christmas. There was no room for Jesus' family at the inn either. Hey, that's right. I remember that part of the Christmas story, but don't worry, Aunt Agnes. I'll clean my room up for you so you don't feel like you're sleeping in a barn like Jesus did. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Uh, I am afraid that my clerk is right. We seem to have another celebration scheduled here tomorrow evening. A um, Christmas party for the National Cheese Corporation of America. 
I did however find a note about your wedding, but the note says the wedding is next Christmas Eve, so we will be happy to see you then. Goodbye. Wait, what? No, no, we're not gonna wait another year to get married just because the venue double booked. Well, the pastor says the church is available if it's needed. It's way too small, but I guess that'll have to do then. Oh, wait. I, I may have just the thing for you, my good friends. I value your business, and it so happens that troubleshooting is my specialty. You see, our village and hotel is booked, yes, but I, Nirmat Nala Asaj, am also owner of Nirmat's Petting Zoo. Yeah, I pet a llama there one time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We love our llamas, you see. There's Bessie and Matilda. Oh, now she's a funny one. And then Mr. There's... Asaj, I believe you had an idea? Oh, yes. Well, the zoo is closed for winter, but there is a lovely spacious barn on the property where animals stay. It's not quite as elegant as hotel, no, but it is bigger than church and quite warm. I would be both happy and glad if you should wish to have your wedding ceremony there. I would even discount price. You're asking me to get married in a barn? Oh, Mary Ann, don't you see? It would really be like the very first Christmas. There's no room for Mary or Joseph at the end. So they stayed in a barn with the animals. You know, I've heard of some really nice barn weddings, dear. Well, I guess it would be perfect in a way. I wanted a real Christmas wedding after all. What do you say, Joe? Hey, I'm just the groom. My only job's to show up on time. Do it, sis. I want to see the animals, especially that llama. It would be fun. <laughs> well, I guess if a barn was good enough for Jesus, then it's good enough for us. Oh, wonderful. I will be happy to be there personally myself to help you in any way at all. I will even provide you with hot cocoa to serve your wedding guests. Hot cocoa is my specialty. Oh, that'll be nice. Hot cocoa and wedding cake. Sure. Well, let's go so we can start decorating. I'll call the pastor back and let him know to me to set the petting zoo. That way we can go over the ceremony and all with that. Sounds great. Say, uh, Mary Ann, since we're getting married in a barn, does that mean I get to wear blue jeans instead of a tux? Hmm? Yeah, me too. No way, you guys. This is still a wedding, and I want you both to look nice. Okay. As you wish. Mary Ann, honey, you better eat. You're going to need your strength this evening. I know. I'm just so happy and excited and nervous all at once. That's all just natural. I would say Jesus' mother Mary probably felt much the same way close to the time for baby Jesus to be born. And Joseph, too. Hey, sis, if you're not going to finish your pancakes, I'll take them. Okay. Well, I have to go. There's so much to do before this evening. Daddy, don't forget to pick up the cake, okay? <sighs> Relax, sweetheart. This is your special day. Enjoy it. Cole and I will pick up the cake. Will there be time for me to see the animals before the wedding starts? You may have some time, but remember you'll be in your nice suit, honey. You won't need to do anything that'll get it dirty. Yes, ma'am. So it was a busy day with a lot of rushing around. Dad and I picked up the wedding cake. It was huge. Mr. Sauce brought over a lot of hot cocoa, too. I spent as much time as I could with the animals. I tried my best not to get dirty. I was just talking to the llama when Dad came up. Come on, Cole. It's almost time. Okay. I have to go get your sister. You go over there and wait with Joe and the pastor. Hey, Joe. Uh, Joe? Hey. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> um, hi. Are you all right, son? You're shaking so hard your knees are knocking together. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. I'm just a little nervous, I guess. That's perfectly normal, Joe. Perfectly normal. Just make sure you don't lock your knees. You don't want to pass out. I've seen funny videos of guys fainting at their weddings. Well, I don't think we want that to happen here, Cole. Looks like we're starting, Joe. Just think about watching for your beautiful bride to come walking through those barn doors. I guarantee that will make you feel a lot better. Thanks, Pastor. That's our cue. Let's go, guys. Doesn't Cole look just so sweet? Oh, where's my hanky? I better find it before the bride comes in. I just know I'm gonna cry like a baby. There she is, Joe. She's beautiful.
Who gives this woman a way to be wed? My mother. I mean, her mother and I do. You may be seated. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here this evening to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. If anyone here has any objections, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> that doesn't count. As we begin this ceremony here on this blessed Christmas Eve, I want to briefly share with you a very fitting message of God's love. Luke chapter 2 verses 6 through 14 says, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in a field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. So in a place much like the humble barn where we are now, God sent down his greatest gift of love to the earth. He sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to not only teach us to love, but to show us how to love when he ultimately gave his life and took our place on the cross. It is because of His gift that we give. It is because of His love that we can love. His example of sacrificial, unconditional love is one that we can all follow today. As 1 John 4:11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now, Joseph, do you take Mary Ann to be your lawfully wedded wife to love, honor, cherish, as long as you both shall live? I do. And Mary Ann, do you take Joseph to be your lofty wedded husband to love, honor, cherish, as long as you both shall live? I do. Then by the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you... Uh, 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 man and wife? You're supposed to say man and wife? Uh, who let the llama out? What? I'll catch her. Did you let the llama out? Oh, somebody get that llama. The llama's not supposed to drink up cocoa. Mr. Asas finally caught the llama and put her back in her stall. The pastor finished the wedding, and Joe and Mary Ann were married. I closed my eyes for the kissing part. Dad says someday I'll feel different about my mushy stuff. I guess we'll see. I did think it was neat what the pastor said about Christmas being all about love. God's love for us and our love for each other. I had never thought about Christmas that way before. This was some Christmas, that's for sure. A happy new couple, no room in the inn, a barn, God's gift of love, and a llama. That's what I did for Christmas vacation. Today's program was written by Samantha Forbes and directed by Joshua Tomlin. The cast included Abigail Tomlin, Amy Gu, Samantha Forbes, Ron Riedenauer, Joshua Tomlin, Levi Forbes, and Jim Goode. Thanks for listening, and Merry Christmas.